Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Parker and this is the second video on my series on how to use ZD Plaskin. In this video today, I'll be going through the understanding of the ZD Plaskin process. If you need any help with the installation, I suggest taking a look at my video one. As a quick note, I am using Windows, so if you need any help with using Linux or Mac, things might look a bit different for you today. I want to take this time to acknowledge the few people that made my summer research possible. I want to thank the National Science Foundation and the University of Nebraska-Lincoln for funding my research as well as giving me an opportunity to learn virtually. I would also like to thank my professor, Dr. Barry Chung, and mentor Deepa Chuarty for teaching me and encouraging me through this process. My goals for today are to review what ZD Plaskin is and what are the kinetics used. I will also be going over each component of the ZD Plaskin software in detail showing you what they do and why we need them. So first, what is ZD Plaskin? I know I've said that word a lot and it probably has no significance to, to you yet, but the ZD Plaskin software stands for Zero Dimension Plasma Kinetics. This is a software that uses a differential equation solver and a database reader to run many reactions at once and predict its behavior based on set parameters. You have the ability to write your own reactions and modify them piece by piece, and once you get to know what you're doing, it'll work really quickly. Each test runs fast, as in you can get an output within a matter of seconds. That doesn't mean it's easy work, however, because writing the code and creating your experiment to test will take up the majority of your time and effort. So let's take a look at the kinetics. This is the Maxwell-Boltzmann equation. It is used to run those reactions that we want to test in order of different processes. In one, this shows the source rates and determining varying processes using the variable J. Two is the behavior of specific reactions. And three uses the reaction rate and state J, title RJ, in uh, terms of concentration. Four shows the source rates at RJ, and finally at five, it brings everything together with the collision type and uh, from the database, and it also has the conditions such as like gas temperature. So what are we working with? Let's look at the couple of different types of collisions that the software can look at. Attachment is just as it sounds, they'll have to connect together. Elastic results in no gain or loss in energy. Ionization, you know, creates a fully ionized output. Excitation is the climb of the excited state. This will create a charged or partially charged particle. As a quick note, I want to inform you guys of what kind of plasma we'll be working with. Weakly ionized plasma is determined by the ionized degree. The ionized degree is the ratio of charged particles to non-charged particles. If the ratio is really small, as in 10 to the negative 7th to 10 to the negative 4th, it is classified as weakly ionized. It is not as strong as the kind of plasma you'll see in nuclear cases, however, it is still really useful. It is non-thermal, as it does not rely as much on keeping high temperatures, as well as it is selectively reactive. It won't react with everything it comes in contact with, so we need to create the best environment possible to uh, have the reactions occur the way that we want. The ZD Plaskin website is super useful when you are getting accustomed to this software. You can find the background of the software and a manual on how to use it, as well as where to download it. I strongly suggest getting yourself familiar with the manual, because it is such a good way to uh, get used to running this software. Additionally, there's a bunch of examples, well, four to be exact. I have recorded videos on how to run all four of those examples, which can be found in my channel. There are also publications and statistics on who uses the ZD Plaskin software. Personally, what I find most important about this website is the connection to the Google group. There are a bunch of people who will post the issues or questions that they have, and other people will help each other out. If you are stuck with learning this software, I suggest going there while also taking a look back at the manual. Now for the big part. Let's walk through the entire ZD Plaskin process, top to bottom. I have a roadmap that I've created that'll show the process and how they work together. I know it can be a bit intimidating right now, but trust me, you'll get there. First, I want to talk about the three things that this diagram has that is already part of the download. That is the preprocessor, the Bolsig solver, and the Devode solver. These are, um, these are really important, and I'll walk through each specific step. In this slide, this is what the components will look like. This is in the ZD Plaskin folder that we downloaded and extracted. We will need these four components. The Bolsig solver includes both the Bolsig underscore g.dll and the Bolsig underscore g.lib. For each experiment you use, you will want to copy and paste this into the experiment that you're using. Let's start with the preprocessor. This is the, the purpose of the preprocessor is to uh, convert the connect.inp into the ZD Plaskin module. This will notify you of any issues that you have in your database or connect.inp. It'll all help you with those itty bitty little mistakes. You can name this file whatever you'd like, however I do suggest calling it the ZD Plaskin underscore m.f90 just so you can keep track of where it is. We have two database readers, aka the Bolsig Plus reader. These are um, the the things that go into your database and use the rate constants to predict our outcome. In order to run our examples, we need to have both of these in our folder. 
the differential equation solver is when I showed you that big reaction earlier, this is what works that through using all of our reactions at once, showing them all interfering at the same time. Next up, let's take a look at our components and uh, what we need to write for each experiment. We need to write the connect.inp, the user code, and the bullsig database. First, we will look at our connect.inp. There are four big parts to this file. The elements will list all of its basic forms. In the visual that I have provided, it'll show AR and E. The species will show different variations of each element, so in this case it has like positively charged argon. Next is the bullsig section. This says what we want to use from our database reactants for this experiment. We only have argon in this case. Finally, we have our reactions. This will list out all of our additional reactions and it'll also note what database um, section it'll apply to by using exclamation place bullsig. This is where you can list what you're testing. It can be small or huge depending on how many reactions you're using, but in the examples for ZDPlaskin, we never have to write our connect.inp. Luckily, we have a lot of references, so it won't be too bad kind of getting into and getting used to writing your own. Next is your user code. This is where you can list your initial densities and parameters. If you want to use QTPlaskin, this is where you will list your results. Well, this is where you'll list that line that I showed y'all. Um, additionally, sometimes you'll have conditions that aren't constant. The easiest way to work with that is by using a data in.dat file. Next up is the creation of our database. The database is a list of rate constants and specific reactions. This can range in length depending on how many reactions you're using, um, but I told you about a couple of those database readers in those earlier PowerPoints. This is where they will go to run the software. There are three main components to a database. The equations will be listed, the rate constants are provided, and it'll also show what type of collision we're dealing with. I downloaded my databases from lxcat.net, which is super easy to use. If you need help getting started with the lxcat um, website, I suggest going to the How to Use tab and follow their tutorials. Alright, so getting back to um, the roadmap that I showed you, we already know what's already been downloaded and what we need to write. Let's look at the couple of things that need to be created. Um, in this, we are looking at the ZDPlaskin module and the results. There's a couple of other things that are created, like these dbd.log and the couple of mods that are created, but those aren't as important to the process. Starting with the ZDPlaskin module, this is created by pre-processing the connect.inp. This is a large file full of subroutines and code. If you need help understanding a specific line, it'll all go through that in the ZDPlaskin manual. The output is our results in the form of an application. We can name this anything. For my first couple of experiments, I would name this different versions of my name just to test to see if it would work. When you open this, it'll show your, you your results. If you want QT Plaskin, you gotta go and specify that in, in your user code, which I, spe which I talked about earlier. This is what those QT Plaskin results look like. They will list off your conditions, your reactions, and our results. And with that, y'all, we have walked through each component of the ZD Plaskin process. Here's how they all work together. First, we are going to write our connect.inp. We'll pre-process that unto creating our ZDPlaskin module. The connect.inp will tell us what needs to be included in our BullSig database. The user code will be written to contain all of our experiments that we wish to test. Well, it'll talk about all of our environment. The software will create, will work, well, the software itself will use the ZDPlaskin module, the user code, the database, and the kinetics equation solver, all at the same time to create our output in a matter of seconds. Once this has been creating an, once this has created an output, we will move then to our QT Plaskin results, and that will be what we can plot our data with. I hope this video has helped you with your understanding of the software and how to run a test. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at natdparker22 at gmail.com or join our Google group. I hope to see you all in the next video. Have a good one. Bye!